Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beneath Vancouver Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, um, or watching this on YouTube and seeing my beautiful face. Um, then thank you so much, regardless of tuning in. And this is episode number 46. Uh, this is just keep going on the episode a week. Uh, I made that a goal of mine. And uh, yeah, we're still we're still ch- uh, kind of just chugging along, along here and and working hard and getting some wonderful conversations in and meeting some amazing people on the podcast. But that's enough about me and enough about the podcast. Um, I'd like to introduce our special guests. That's right, plural. Uh, I've been privileged to chat with two wonderful people today, um, both Rita and Kelly from Vela, Vela Candle Bar. No, did I screw that up? No, we got, got it. it. No, I got it right. Okay, it's got to be confident. Vela Candle Bar, um, local business here that's making uh, their own candles from scratch and, and um, selling them to to obviously people here in the Lower Mainland. And uh, if there's one thing about this podcast is we're out here to, to support local. And uh, yeah, obviously right now during during COVID times, uh, people are trying different things and trying different ventures and exploring a little bit and taking some some risks. And you know, we're here to support that. And that's what this podcast is all about. So. Thank you both to to Rita and Kelly for for coming on the show today. How are you? How are you both? We're good. good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so of much. No. Thanks for thanks for coming aboard. I know um, it's always interesting doing these, especially. Well, I would say like a majority of my guests are people I've never met before. Uh, now, obviously, not even in real life because I can't really do that. <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult. So. Um, it's always nice to be able to just, you know, come on the podcast, come on a quick call and just have a chat, right? This is what it's all about, an authentic conversation about local, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, creatives. And this is what uh, people seem to enjoy. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it here and kind of just uh, go straight, you know, jump to the to the number one question that's always asked here. The first question I should say um, is Rita and Kelly, who are you today? Cool. Well, I'll go first. So, um, so today, I mean, every day is a little bit different for us. Um, but today, right. I'm mostly creative, Rita. Like we are just like trying to launch new products. So, you know, being creative is my favorite part of the whole business. You know, being one half mm-hmm. of a small business, it's you know, I'm always finding myself focusing on something different. But we're working on a new product right now. So today, I get to do some product testing, designing some labels, designing some like packaging. So it's right. um, yeah, lots of fun. But that's who I am today. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like to hear. How about you, Rita? Oh, nope, that was <laughs> Kelly. Oh, I'm um, sorry. My no, apologies. Okay. No worries. The thing didn't show up on my end. No worries. Um, so I would describe myself right now as like a recent graduate um, who's just getting started in exploring the opportunities that life has to offer. Um, I would say like for myself, I'm someone who has grown over the past year and reorganized my priorities to focus on, I guess you could say like the simpler things in life, such as making sure everyone around me is healthy. Um mm-hmm spending more time with my like, close friends and family and just trying new things and taking risks, um, such as starting Bella Candle Bar with Rita. So that's, I would say that's pretty much where I'm at today right now. Love it. No, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I, for those who are tuning in, obviously, from, for the most part, the podcast is just myself and someone else. So it's always nice to, to bring uh, another person kind of here as a as a um, as a guest as well and having a conversation not just between myself and another individual but but two other people it's i think it's just allowing us to bounce more ideas off each other so i'm i'm really looking forward to to that aspect of the podcast but uh i i don't know this and i'm sure most of our listeners who are tuning in are probably wondering this exact question how did you guys meet or have you guys been like you know lifetime friends <laughs> Did you mean like the day before you guys started the business? Like what's going on? Tell us the backstory a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I can... answer this one. <laughs> yeah, are... Ooh, spilling the tea. <laughs> yeah. So Kelly is actually my cousin. We're cousins. And oh, she was actually, okay. yeah, she's my first best friend actually. Um, yeah. So when my aunt was pregnant, I was so excited. Like just that's an understatement. I was, you know, (laughs) hanging out with her every single day, like trying to talk to Kelly through the womb. And when (laughs) Kelly was born, like, I just wanted to be by her side all day, every day. And she was, yeah, she's my first best friend. And, you know, as we grew older, 
we're six years apart. So, you know, sometimes life gets ahead of us and, Mm -hmm. you know, she, like she and I became less close as we grew older, but yeah, Bella Candle Bar has really allowed us to um, just kind of grow together and reconnect. And we always say like, we've seen each other more in the past six months than we have like our entire lives. (laughs) Right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to add there? Um, Well, I would say like, it's not that we weren't like close. We were still like the closest because um, our other cousins and like our sisters are just like a lot younger than us. So we were still always Mm -hmm. like the two closest, even though we're six years apart. But no, this definitely um, brought us even closer together. Like we literally talk every single day to each other about (laughs) anything and everything. Um, Right. Sometimes maybe even too much. (laughs) (laughs) That's interesting. And and kind of like, I guess, for the both of you was, you know, starting like a little small business, uh, always something that you had in mind, or was kind of COVID, uh, I don't want to say the, well, yeah, like the opportunity or the hidden opportunity in the sense of being able to perhaps try different things and obviously being stuck at home and different plans, maybe not panning out the way that both of you had want to, was that kind of like almost a, the, the blessing in disguise in the sense? Yeah, I would say so. Like for myself, um, it COVID, of course, there's like good and bad things that happened out of it, right? Um, I think for so. us, um, it definitely gave us more time to come together and try new things. Like for myself, I was always interested in entrepreneurship. Um, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to start something on my own. I've always been like hands-on, very interested in crafting things. Right. Um, but I didn't know how to start a business. Mm-hmm. Um, we both didn't know no how to start exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no like, written book on how to start a business anywhere online. You can yeah. Google all the things, but there's no like step-by-step book. So I was always afraid of doing that. Um, and then one day, um, in the summer, um, last year, we just got together and we're like, Hey, let's make some candles. Cause Rita loves yeah. candles. Yeah. Um, and I just love crafting things and making anything. So I was like, okay, sure. Um, so we were at her house and we're just crafting it. And then all of a sudden we're like, Oh, like, Hey, maybe this could be a <laughs> little, you know, like passion project yeah. turned into like a side business kind of thing. Um, so that's pretty much how it started. Um, I think Rita has some stuff to add on to this, but that's <laughs> sort of like where I'm coming from, I guess you of could course, say. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, from my perspective, I didn't so much like want to own a business because I didn't really know what that meant. I just I love candles. I love gifting candles. I loved receiving candles. It's actually been a dream of mine for years to own my own candle line. And I've always thought like, I want to own a candle line and name candles after my best friends. And, you know, I've dreamt of this candle line like more, more times than I can explain and like all the different (laughs) ideas I've had. So for me, it was just like a huge passion project and having Kelly be really focused on entrepreneurship and like the business aspect of it, it really pushed me to want to do this as an actual, you know, as an actual business, as opposed to just like creating some candles and, you know, having them like labeled as my friend's names. (laughs) Yeah, no, of course. And I think the beauty of that and what com- what comes really the positives that comes out of like a partnership or, you know, a partnership that's with two people, with three people, with four people, like your co-founders, so to speak, is the ability to, again, use each other's weaknesses and strengths, right? And everyone has like their, their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to, I guess, like business or just in life in general, yeah. right? There's certain skills that other people are, you know, better at and, and vice versa. So coming together and, you know, as you mentioned, um, coming with like the entrepreneurship side and also the more the creative side and kind of merging, almost fusing those two together is like, here we go. Let's, let's try this out. Let's yeah. see where it takes us. And um, that's really where great ideas start. Right. I mean, if, with brainstorming, with a passion of something uh, either like it's a problem to fix or a product that they want to sell. And at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's where great ideas, that's, that's their, that's their seed, right. That's where, where everything grows. So um, I'm curious about the name because our previous episode uh, with Julie, which if you haven't listened to it already, make sure to check it out. Uh, she came up with the name for her digital marketing agency, literally with her like group of friends. They were just screaming random words out and the words tiny and then planet came out and she was like, oh, let's do that tiny planet digital. Um, so I'm just curious to maybe hearing the backstory behind the, the name of your business. 
Yeah. So vela means candle in Spanish. And when I was studying um, in university, I have a <laughs> I have a double major in English and Spanish. And mm. I just I love just everything kind of Spanish related, like culturally Latin American. Like I studied in Ecuador and I studied in Chile and I just oh, loved wow. um yeah, I just loved the culture, the people and just the word Bella was just so simple and cute and I just thought that would be like the perfect name for mm-hmm. our little business. Um and then yeah, just candle bar. We kind of just felt like it fit. Um we were also thinking like maybe candle co, candle studio but we really liked um the idea of bella candle bar and you know maybe in the future we can do you know cute little beer glasses as candle vessels kind of things like that Mm. so we just kind of felt it was a good way to be creative and stand out a little bit yeah little merch line down the line right (laughs) (laughs) some hoodies some hats you know i could wear it on the podcast uh (laughs) you want to get (laughs) yeah that's uh yeah make sure. first to receive them for sure i was gonna say if that does yeah. happen let me know let me know yeah, um sure. let's let's talk about i guess a little bit um you know you shared a little bit about your backgrounds and like kind of what actually yeah what you studied and you know graduating and everything like that and the creative side and the entrepreneurial side what's been the biggest obstacle so far when coming together obviously as a as a dynamic duo let's say it um when it comes to actually like making this into I guess not so much scaling, but also kind of figuring out exactly what steps, what steps are to, are the steps to take for that current day. Obviously when you're building a brand or when you're building a business, you kind of like got a bajillion things in your mind. You're, you're, you're going a thousand miles an hour in your head and you're, you're, you want to do this, but you also have to do that and you have to do this and you have to do that. What's been, what's been kind of like uh, the, the building, building the foundation for, for it so far? Yeah. So I think that I could say like for our, working together wise in that aspect, we don't really have any like arguments really about anything. <laughs> um, we, we kind of just know like which one of us out of the two of us is better at which job, for example. Like right. um, I would, I sometimes like call myself accountant Kelly, even though I have no <laughs> idea about anything about accounting, but as the two of us, I would say I'm a little bit better um, with math. Um, so we kind of just did that like designation oh like Kelly you're gonna do this and then Rita's obviously more in charge of like the creative um, design and like the website um, and product labels and such Um, but I would say to this day um, we're still learning every day there's yeah. yeah there's so many things to do and some of the things that we didn't even know that we needed to do until we got to that step um, mm-hmm. like for example, like figuring out like insurance, um, business registrations, um, licenses, all those things, we didn't really know that we needed all of that before. So there's definitely a lot to read upon when you actually encounter that step. Um, and to be honest, sometimes it can get overwhelming when there's so much information thrown in front of you. Um, but what I found really helpful was that when at first you look at everything, there's obviously so much information. Um, what I try to do is I try to kind of just pick out like one thing that I need to focus on each day and then go back and read, read all the information that's available there. And then it seems not as um, scary, I guess you could say, um, as right. it did initially when you first saw it. Um, so yeah, definitely. I would say like the legal side of things and like operations, it's more tough for us um, because we both don't really have a background in business. Um, but yeah. You can yeah. always learn it. I think that's the common yeah. theme, right? I, out of like, I would say a majority, I'm not sure exactly the number, but I'm just like spitballing. Let's go with like over 50% of the people that I, that I have a chat with on this podcast um, and even outside the podcast as well that either own their own business or, are in one way or another involved in business, I would say like 50 percent ish, maybe a little bit more don't have any like traditional business background. Everything is like self taught um, online, YouTube, <laughs> like all these different things, trial and error as well. Like sometimes you have to um, you have to fail, uh, not fail, but learn from an experience that wasn't yeah. successful uh, to to be able to adapt and make it better the next time around. Right. So um, I sure. think it's really important to highlight with what you said that you don't need like the traditional business background to start a business. I would say it's even sometimes even better to not have the traditional business background because you learn more, you can navigate a little bit better and it, it gives you a, a different perspective than maybe other people as well. So 
it's it's nice to hear that. Um, and it's always a learn. You always learn. Every day is a learning experience, no matter oh, what. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, like we continuously learn something new every single day. Like sometimes, like new things will just jump at us, and we'll be like, "Oh, didn't know <laughs> <Yeah>. about that." <laughs> What's that? Yeah. yeah, didn't know that existed. <laughs> exactly right. And you know, like we have like so many resources available nowadays. You can literally just Google things, YouTube, mm-hmm. read some books. Um, so yeah, every day is a new learning experience for sure. Yeah. For sure. Rita, what would you consider to be like the, like for the, from the creative side, like what, what joys bring, what joys, sorry, let me rephrase this. What <laughs> from the creative side brings you the most joy? There we go. I a long say, day. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I would say just the, like to see the product after, after it's done being created, like regardless mm-hmm. if it's, the candle, if it's the label, if it's like what we want uh, packaged, I just think like the most joy is seeing the product afterwards. Cause you know, sometimes it's quite tedious to, you know, make candles. We like, we made candles for like 22 hours one day, like literally <laughs> we were like, we couldn't even believe it was like almost 24 hours we were making candles and it was so tedious, but like, it was so worth it to see it afterwards. And then, mm-hmm. you know, after putting the labels on and then packaging them all, and then, you know, then seeing them on, on other people's Instagram stories or posts, the, that like, it, it just makes it all worth it. Yeah, I've definitely seen some of your stories. And there's like, not even just the candle making, but I, I don't know how long ago it was. Um, <laughs> maybe you can give me some, uh, some background knowledge on this but when when y'all were putting stuff in your in your trunk or yeah in the trunk or something (laughs) and then that was like filled up to the brim of like packages of candles and a bunch of other materials that that y'all were needing yeah how how, how's that kind of like like that you're going out you're you're doing all this and you're like filling up your car with like all these different things and and sometimes you don't maybe doesn't even fill it up how is that experience like that you're doing this on the day to day? How does that feel? Yeah. So we both have, we both have a car and my car, I just have a little civic. I call it the Batmobile. Um, so <laughs> I have I a civic think, too. Civic represent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think the day that you're talking about is this, it's pretty recent. We went um, to the yeah, supply relatively. store and, you know, in hindsight, I do wish we took Kelly's car because she drives an SUV. But when we saw the supplies, we were both we were both just staring at each other. We're like, how is this going to fit into the Civic? Like, there's no way. We had to adjust yeah. all the seats. Like, yeah, Kelly had to, like, sit really close to the front because mm-hmm. I was driving. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting because you never really know when you're getting the supplies, like, what you'll encounter like sometimes you go to the store and you know there's no supplies left like there's a huge shortage on a lot of supplies right now and you know kind of fighting for you know a box of wax or like you know jars it's it's been that's actually I think one of our biggest obstacles now that I'm thinking about it Um, (laughs) that was going to be my my follow-up question yeah like the biggest obstacles that that y'all have faced so far so definitely like inventory supplies kind of kind of stuff yeah, I guess like with COVID, there's a lot of people that are getting into um, crafting. Yeah, DIY. So, yeah, kind of DIY stuff. So yeah, it's it's great. I love that, you know, I love seeing all the new projects that everyone is um, creating. So like, I'm not mad at it or anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> Just, not allowed, not allowed to make your own candles. They're, they're all for yeah, us. Yeah. yeah, no, not mad at it. I love seeing it. And like me and Kelly have a huge, like our motto is like, collaboration over competition like we don't Mm -hmm. think you know yeah we love love seeing other candle businesses start up like we're so new and we have received so much love and support that we love to love and support other small businesses too so um yeah I'd say that is probably an obstacle for us to kind of get our hands on supplies but we know now that when we do have resources we'll just buy it in bulk and um store it but, and yeah. not worry about it for another couple months, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and take Kelly's car as well. That's another yeah, thing. That, that's <laughs> yeah, that's funny because that day, I think it was the day before, we actually went and got some supplies. And that run you like ended up being like just a tiny little box <laughs> um, of <laughs> tins that we got. So I was like, okay, you know, like 
tomorrow's run is not going to be anything big, right? Like today's is just this little box. And then when we got there that day, I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned for next time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? You learn each experience is going to be different, right? Yeah. We're no matter how big or how small. So it's always, always important. It's, it's nice to also just have some laughs with it. I think especially as a, as a partnership, you know, between you two, you can kind of just laugh in the friendship that you had even before the business. You can just kind of yeah. laugh it off and kind of just probably look at each other and you're just like, eh, yeah, this is probably not <laughs> yeah. going to fit, but we'll make it work, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah um, we totally don't nice to see. take each other like super serious. Seriously. Like yeah. out of, yeah, like the goal is not to, you know, make sure that we, you know, are blowing up yeah yeah we like we don't get worked up over things like if something happens it happens we just have to figure a way to to solve it there's no point in in like crying over over, don't cry over spilled milk i think that's what the saying (laughs) goes or something like that Uh, is honestly the best medicine out there right you can laugh it is It yep. is. It really is. I mean, I make fun of myself all the time, right? I guess that's that's why <laughs> that's why I'm like that. Make fun of myself. Anyways, moving on. Uh, we're we're not going to talk about that on this podcast. That's maybe for another episode. But um, the next question that I did want to bring up here, and uh, you kind of touched upon it a little bit, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of people are doing like their DIYs, personal projects. Um, I've seen a lot of small local businesses pick up in the last. Yeah, I would say in the last couple of months. Uh, especially I would say mostly due, not mostly due to COVID, but may potentially a huge influence due to COVID. As you mentioned, like a lot of people ha- are at home, they have more time potentially for their hobbies and their passions. And mm-hmm. you know, just as a way to reflect on certain skills and things that you like to enjoy and be like, oh, maybe I can do something out of that, right? So the question that I have for the both of you is um, kind of navigating through that space and seeing kind of what people are creating and everything like that. Do you Do you ever kind of, take inspiration from other people, but feel worried that you might be kind of copying or, or kind of maybe kind of just tell me, this is maybe more of a, of a Rita question since it's more on the creative side. Like where, where do you get your inspiration from? Um, maybe not necessarily just for like the candles and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but maybe just in general when it comes to, to creating. Yeah. So we get our inspiration from just things around us that we love. Like mm-hmm. it's funny because our best selling and most loved candle is called Zen and it's jasmine green tea and white pear. And Ooh. it like, I love jasmine green tea. It's my favorite tea. And, you know, I saw that it was a scent that could be a candle made it. And, you know, it now it's, you know, the best seller and everyone loves mm-hmm. it. Um, so just like taking inspiration from around us, like we like to, try to find scents for things that we love. Um, we like to do polls on Instagram, like what kind of scents yep. do you like? Like what kind of scents for the summer, for the springtime, for wintertime? Um, so yeah, I think that's how we, we usually get our info there. And if we see something super funny or super, not super funny, super cool that we think could smell <laughs> really funny, nice or too. funny, yeah, then we, uh, <laughs> yeah, then we will try it out. Like we'll try anything. <laughs> I like it. And out of curiosity, because I, I don't know, and, and and pardon my ignorance in that sense, how exactly like, I wouldn't say difficult, but like strenuous is the actual creating aspect of, of the candle itself? I think the hardest part I would say in creating it would be testing out the scent. So we, we actually at first when we were trying out different scents, we didn't do it very efficiently. <laughs> Um, Mm -hmm. we were actually just making like whole candles, like finished candles Mm. and then trying them out that way. Um, and it wasn't until like, I think a couple months after that we figured out, oh, there's a way to actually test out the scent (laughs) before making the candle. So that when that, like when we discovered that we're like, oh my gosh, like, why aren't we doing this? Um, so we did that first and I actually enjoy that part the most, um, because we're literally mixing like like three, four different, like five, 10, whatever different scents that we like, like the names of, like we were like, Oh, like, Hey, this sounds good. Right. So we'll like buy it and then we'll just mix it all together and then just see what we like. Um, and a lot of the times, like for example, um, Reverie, one of our, um, scents, um, that one actually was, um, decided like to be into our, like our uh, signature lineup, um, because the scent reminded of 
reminded us of our childhood. Um, like those mm. little like lychee jelly cups that you would eat <laughs> when you're young. Oh, um, yes. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Like yeah. the, like they're like this big, different flavors. Yep. Yeah. And, like a yes. little jelly inside. Yeah. So that um, scent came Mint. from like that type of like inspiration, right? When I smelled okay. that, I was like, oh my gosh does this not smell like the little lychee cups we used to have? Yes. And Rita's like, oh my gosh, yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I think like, I guess you could say like the mixing part <laughs> For um, sure. of the candle is my favorite. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, <laughs> one thing that I did want to like bring up and in terms of, you know, kind of navigating the space and being a, like a, a new kind of venture for the both of you, how has it been like social media wise? I'm very curious how, new businesses are, are kind of handling what I would consider like, especially on Instagram, because that's where I found you. Um, you guys, Instagram is not the easiest platform right now to grow as compared to maybe like a TikTok or, or, or mm-hmm. something else. Um, How has it been kind of navigating the social media, the, the, yeah, the social media space so far for the both of you? Yeah, so we were very lucky to have very supportive friends and family members um, follow our page, share our page, um, just to get our name out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then, of course, like you mentioned, um, you saw our giveaway today. Like We like to give back um, just to show that we appreciate everyone um, for supporting us along our journey, right? Um, so we like to have giveaways. Um, there, Of course, there's so many different um, brands that they're using Instagram nowadays it is sometimes hard to get yourself noticed or make yourself stand out I should say Um, but I think that we have like good customer service like we're very responsive on Instagram we love engaging and interacting with um, like other people or even businesses Um, so like Rita said like bring it back to the collaboration over competition like moto that we have um i think that's also what sets us apart as well right and how about you rita like in terms of because i know for a lot of people the focus or i'm not sure who maybe the both of you handle the social media like the instagram but it obviously have to be a certain not have to be but it's nice to have like a certain theme like a certain aesthetic um does it ever feel like a lot of pressure like in terms of oh maybe this picture doesn't look as nice or oh yeah. maybe let's not post that or has yeah, yeah. what's that experience like so far um, I think when we first started, we we had an idea for ourselves. Like we wanted um, our pictures to be quite clean, quite simple looking, um, and mm-hmm. we've just kind of followed that. We don't really um, like we we're proud of the candles we make, so we are more than happy to take pictures and show them off as the main focus of our page. So we're not. I wouldn't say we're too worried about the aesthetics of you know what the whole page looks like. Um, right yeah we're just like we're super proud of our product and we like yeah we love oh yeah that's fair yeah that's all good I was just curious just because I know for some people that's like their biggest stress or like they plan it out they even either buy this app or have apps that like show you what the grid would look like like outside of Instagram just so that they're aware of oh maybe this doesn't look that nice so I was just curious to see how precise and stuff like that it's obviously you, you have an idea of how you want your pictures to look and I think for candles, it like makes sense, at least in my mind, you want it to keep it clean, very simple, not a lot of like, you know, noise, so to speak, in the picture, mm-hmm. just kind of highlighting, obviously, the product in this case, it is yeah. the candle, right? So that's, that's of importance there. And keep in mind, like, we don't have professional cameras or anything. If anybody out there who's looking to start thinks that they need um, professional equipment, like we're literally just using our phones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's everything. professional enough by now. Yeah. Take a picture on your phone, go on yeah. Visco, play around with it, just poke, you're good to light go. Room. Yeah, some yeah Lightroom, app. Visco, yeah. Snapseed, yeah. whatever you want to use as your editing app. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to anybody out there who's looking to start like taking product photos or anything, don't feel like, don't feel discouraged that you don't have a professional camera or anything like that. You can just use your phone. And I'm pretty sure majority of the people that are out there on Instagram are also using their phone as well. Yeah, really. The only people that at least I see, obviously, I don't see like who exactly is taking the picture of what's being used. But it's really only the big, big brands that like have like that big marketing budget yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, they're probably yeah. going for a little bit more uh, different angles or a little bit more production value, so to speak. Uh, but that's not to say that your yeah, that your iPhone or your your Android or whatever phone you have, can't really do the job because it can natural light 
do some editing and <laughs> boom, you're good to go. Yeah, Does exactly. wonders. You'll, you'll be that, surprised. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. I, I will say that we do have, um, like our friends and foundation group is, is amazing. So we did mm-hmm. get um, some help from one of our really good friends for our website product mm. photos. Um, like she's not a professional photographer or anything, but um, I do. She does have like a, a creative eye. So, I mean, I think it's it's important to also lean on your resources. You know, like it's something fun that we were able to do together as well. So, um, yeah, just like you know, use what you have and then use the resources that are available to you as well is what I would say. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to ask, right? Hey, can you help me out? And yeah. you know, if people really want to support you, they'll support you, right? So yeah, that's what it boils down to. Um, well, we're nearing, unfortunately, again, I, I'm still surprised on how f- quickly time goes by here when it comes to these podcasts. But um, I'm curious to to hear the answer for for the following question here. And um, it's kind of like our, our little way to, to wrap up the episode, to give any final thoughts, any pieces of knowledge uh, in that question is like, what piece of advice would you give to you, to your, to your younger self, right? Five, 10 years, or even last week. Um, I'm curious on hearing your guys' thoughts. Do you want to go first or? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can go first. I don't mind. Um, um, so- okay, you go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, you do it. No, I can do it. No, you hang up. No, I <laughs> Okay. So, um, I guess my advice to my younger self would be to don't be afraid uh, to do something because of fear of what other people might say or think about you. Um, so like, like I said before earlier, um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I didn't want to start um, my own business before was also because I was scared. Um, I was mm-hmm. scared of like what my friends would say, what they would think about it. Um, and I was also scared of failure as well. Um, so I would say to my younger self, stop making excuses <laughs> as to why you shouldn't start now or today. Um, and just take some risks. Um, you know, there's this like a uh, quote from Wayne Gretzky. It's so cliche, but I love oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Scott as well, right? Yeah. Office reference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You miss we got 100% it. hundred <laughs> percent of the shots you don't take. And it's so true. Um, you literally don't like know what's going to happen unless you try it out. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So, and I also think that one of the scariest things is the feeling of regret, like the feeling of not knowing what could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, so now for myself, I always think to myself, okay, here's the opportunity right now. I can either try it out and it fails and, you know, that's okay. I learned from it. Or if I don't try, I might not get the opportunity again later on. So I personally don't like the feeling of regret and I'm scared of it. So that's kind of like the motive I live by now is to just go for it. Try it out. Worst case that can happen is that you fail, but you learn from it. I love it. How about you, Rita? Yeah, I mean, mine's really cliche as well. But but mine is just, like if I could go back in time and tell myself one thing, I would just tell myself to just do it. Like there's no mm-hmm. reason not to, like Kelly said, you know, you don't know unless you try. Right. Like I wish that when I first wanted to start a candle line that I just did it and like stopped questioning myself. It's not like something so crazy that, you know, only specific people can do like anyone can make candles. So I wish I just told myself like, I can just, even make them for my friends, like just start. Right. Yeah. That's the most important part, right? Is just starting, figuring out if, you know, I hadn't started this podcast, I wouldn't be, you know, chatting with you two today. Um, I definitely wouldn't have met all the amazing people and had the privilege to chat with amazing people. So you never know where things and kind of like ventures and projects and whatever you want to call it can really take you. It, it really opens doors that, that yeah, you don't know unless you know, or, or sorry, that unless you try. So um, I'm super excited and uh, super, super happy that you were able to to kind of take that plunge and also take the plunge on being on a podcast. I want to give the both of you a huge kind of congratulations and thank you for for taking the time uh, of being here today. And um, yeah, if you have any shout outs as well as can we kind of wrap up the episode, um, feel free to this is kind of your time to shine. Do any shout outs that you want to do. Any (laughs) plugs? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I just want to shout out to like all our supporters, like not just, you know, people that have bought candles, but anyone who, you know, has looked at our website, who's liked a photo of ours, who's commented on a photo, just anyone who, 
gave us a second look I yeah I think I just I just want to say thank you from the bottom of both of our hearts that that means the world to us because you know six months ago we had no idea what we were doing and now we actually have a physical product that we're so proud of we're obsessed with um so we yeah we love that you know there's so many people out there that have you know a little vela in their home (laughs) I love it I like it a lot like that a lot and in terms of like uh you kelly do you have any final shout outs that you want to say um pretty much what rita said but yeah like she said thank you to everyone who supported us um even if you answered a question of ours um at the very beginning we literally didn't know what we were doing so we definitely asked around for help on um like everything so thank you Mm -hmm. to anyone who's ever responded or helped us out, um, like, shared, commented on anything, bought a candle, um, provided us, like, emotional support through friendships, anything like that. Thank you so much. Um, and, of course, thank you, Erin, for having us yeah, on of course, the podcast yeah. today. Um, it was really fun. It's, of course, our first podcast experience, so we didn't know what to expect, but it was really enjoyable. So thank you for I'm, that. I'm, I'm happy to hear that that you enjoyed it. I think that's, like, the beauty about these things, right, is – for, for a lot of people, like it can definitely be nerve wracking, but honestly, when push comes to shove, especially if it's like remote and everything and you're in the comfort of your, of your own home or office, it's, um, you're just having a chat. You're just really getting to know people a little bit more, hear about their story, their ups, their downs. And it's just a nice way to, to kind of share that conversation. And the way that I think about it is like, you're essentially just recording a coffee chat, right? When, when those were, were still a thing. And I definitely miss those, but, um, thank you again for, for taking the time to, to come on the show to the both of you. I really, I really do appreciate it taking time out of your busy schedules and where can people find you? Um, whether it's like your own personal accounts or, um, the, the, the business account, where can people find you? Where can they share your info or find your information and, 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 and share the love when it comes to, to your product. So they can find us, um, on our Instagram at Bella candle bar dot, or sorry, our Instagram is at Bella Candle Bar. And um, our website is www.bellacandlebar.com. Excellent, for sure. Yeah. I'll have that in the description as well for for uh, for those of you who are listening right now in audio form, it'll be in the podcast description. And for those who are watching on, on the YouTubes, it'll be available on the uh, just the video description down below. So Thank you again. I really do appreciate it. Um, anything else you want to say before we sign off here? No, um, just a huge thank you for having us. We really appreciate um, it. So exciting. And don't forget to follow Benny's Vancouver as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was not paid. I never did not tell them before this. That was purely authentic. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, no, it, it does help me out as well. Like, obviously, um, the podcast has grown a lot these last couple of months, a lot of new people happening on the page and on the website. So thank you to everyone for tuning in, whether, you know, you're a longtime supporter or you just stumbled across my podcast through a story or people sharing it. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoy kind of the conversations that we have here on the show. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm just your, your, your average dude, um, just kind of doing the things that he loves, which is having conversations with people and, and in this case, sharing them on the on the interweb. So um, th- I wouldn't be able to do that without the people that I can have the conversations with. Right. So so a huge shout out to everyone. It's a collaborative effort. But yeah, if, uh, if you want to do that, if you want to sauce me a follow uh, beneath dot Vancouver is the Instagram and then just beneath Vancouver dot com. And if you want to chat with me personally, um, my Instagram is also available in the, in the description down below. But thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. This once again was episode number 46 of Beneath Vancouver Radio. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.